One of Canada's biggest banks is under mounting pressure to divest from fossil fuels and other projects that activists say violate Indigenous rights. Protests took place outside Royal Bank of Canada branches across the country on Saturday, April 6th, to mark what it, organizers call Fossil Fuels Day. RBC is a major worldwide financier of fossil fuel projects, and the protests come ahead of a shareholders meeting scheduled for Thursday, April 11th in Etobicoke, Ontario. In Moncton, a demonstration took place despite rainy weather outside the RBC branch on Mountain Road. Protesters expressed grave concern about the rapid pace of climate change. RBC didn't respond to multiple requests for comment for this story. Protesters in Moncton blasted RBC for its investments with military industrial companies, notably Palantir Technologies. The Denver-based company provides artificial intelligence for military purposes to countries including Israel at a time when the country stands accused of genocide for its war in Gaza. In Moncton, protesters delivered a letter to RBC staff demanding that the bank divest from fossil fuels and all projects using force against Indigenous peoples. RBC Financial Group, the largest bank in Canada as measured by assets, was also the world's top financier of fossil fuel projects in 2022. That's according to a report titled Banking on Climate Chaos. The study was published last year by a coalition of environmental groups. The report states that RBC provided $41 billion to the industry in 2022, an increase of 4% over the previous year. In particular, RBC was among the leading financiers of tar sands projects and fracking. Since 2016, RBC has provided a total of $252.5 billion to the fossil fuel industry, according to the report, making it one of the worst offenders since the Paris Agreement came into effect. Public relations materials from RBC state that it's committed to a goal of net zero emissions in our lending by 2050. The bank has cited efforts to mobilize climate action, such as working with energy sector clients on their plans for the energy transition. RBC also recently launched its so-called Climate Action Institute to provide research and advance ideas that contribute to Canada's climate progress. But critics have accused RBC of greenwashing its reputation, prompting an investigation by the Competition Bureau of Canada in 2022. RBC has denied those allegations. Its latest annual report notes allegations of greenwashing as a risk. In an email, a spokesperson for the Competition Bureau of Canada confirmed that the investigation is ongoing and said there is no conclusion of wrongdoing at this time. The spokesperson de declined to provide further details, citing confidentiality. For more on this story, the NB Media Co-op met up with organizers of Saturday's demonstration in Moncton for an interview. Stay tuned. I guess in a nutshell, why are you protesting RBC? We're actually joining one that's across Canada, I think in at least 40 locations from west to east because of the Royal uh, uh, RBC, Royal Bank of Canada, uh, that has been uh, funding fossil fuels for a long, long time. And they have moved up from one of the, you know, within the, the top five to being the top in the world for funding fossil fuel industry. The other uh, uh, factor in today's protest, although there have been many, uh, aimed at, targeted at RBC over the last, well, since the pandemic, uh, is that the RBC AGM is in Etobicoke on Thursday. So this coming Thursday, the 11th, is the RBC AGM. And um, last year, Indigenous leaders from Wet'suwet'en were invited to that uh, AGM, but the powers that be were not necessarily happy with, with what uh, people said, to what, what the, the leaders and the elders said at that meeting and um, they were actually physically touched and uh, Chief Namox in particular uh, was touched in his regalia which is an uh, absolute um, sign of great disrespect. So um, this AGM <laughs> this year is very important to see whether RBC gets the message uh, and so the, the elders and the leaders have decided to return uh, because they were invited again this year. Uh, but in addition to that, there's a, a large protest planned in Etobicoke on Thursday outside the building um, to reinforce uh, support for um, the people 
who've been doing all the work uh, protesting against uh, the coastal gas like project in on unceded land. Yeah, the land defenders. Yeah. So if we go back to about 2019 on Wet'suwet'en territory, uh, the fossil fuel industries were trying to put through a pipeline through the unceded, unsurrendered uh, traditional lands of the Wet'suwet'en people. And the, the land, they, people were defending their land and saying, no, this is it's going to ruin the spawning beds for the salmon in the, in the river, and, and it's the headwaters for that whole territory. And it's a very pristine area. But instead of the, uh, the uh, LNG uh, industries went ahead, and they were blasting, and they were hiring policing from the, the RCMP CERT uh, wing of the RCMP to do overreach and arrest the land defenders on their own territory. So that's going like 2019, 2020, yeah. 2021, every year, and it has escalated. And now they've forced that the whole pipeline has actually gone through. They've, it's ruined a lot of the environment, and a lot of the uh, Wet'suwet'en people have been arrested and charged, even though they you know, under the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People and the Dalgaloop uh, Declaration at the Supreme Court of Canada said this is their territory. They had to have prior consent before anything goes to their land. For RBC to be funding atrocities like this, sort of, um, I would say under the radar, but like the facts are out there. You can find them. They're very clear on paper what they're doing. I think it's important that A, people know, but B, that we tell RBC that you know the average person isn't going to stand for that anymore. And the other thing about what Carol and Amy have just been discussing is that there's this great platitudinal statement on RBC's um, uh, publicity that they, you know, that they respect Indigenous rights and territory and all this stuff, and nothing could be further from the truth. They, they do a lot of greenwashing about how well they're supporting the environment and, you know, to get off fossil fuels. But there's there's nothing documented to say what they're doing, how much money they're putting into it, uh, you know, like what what specifically are they funding. It's just, it's a lot of airy-fairy words. And the other thing that they're funding, um, a, along with the um, destruction of the environment, which is catastrophic globally, is also the funding of the weapons industry. So Palantir, that uh, Canada has been sending weapons over to Israel to to uh, basically participate in the genocide of the people of Gaza, which is why I'm wearing uh, my support for, for the people of Palestine. So RBC is one of the main funders of the Palantir uh, weapons industry. So again, you know, like the environment, uh, indigenous, unceded territories, uh, genocide of the indigenous Palestinian people on their homeland where they're being uh, enforced famine, enforced displacement, enforced maiming children and you know, basically dropping bombs on them. So RBC is for all kinds of reasons. Yes. I, I guess, do you hope that this will kind of embarrass them into divesting from these different industries, or what, what do you hope to achieve? Well, <laughs> they're, they're kind of in collusion with uh, a lot of other um, big industry, big money, uh, government. Yeah. But if we stay silent, nothing will change. And it's got to be grassroots civil society. And, and yeah. speaking of collusion, um, RBC has a whole insurance uh, branch, which uh, and insurance rates are going up and up and up because uh, of all the damage that's being um, uh, inflicted in the world by climate change. So whether it's the floods uh, and the hurricanes like Fiona, and the forest fires that ravaged 
uh, all of Canada, including including the north, uh, to say nothing of, of east to west coast. Um, so so all the fossil fuel industry is 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 responsible collectively for all of that uh, damage. But at the same time, uh, RBC funds the insurance um, so that while they're they're contributing to the perpetration of these things. They also benefit by increased insurance rates to people for home and vehicle coverage, business coverage, and all of this stuff. So it's it's insidious, and um, you know that they need to be they need to be called out. And there's a greater danger, as Carol says, in remaining silent than there is in uh, you know. It, it, it seems like there's an, there's definitely an increased awareness of climate change in the world in, uh, among among the youth and so on, uh, and it seems like things are changing. But uh, emissions keep going up, and yeah. uh, the weather keeps getting more chaotic. Uh, how worried are you about about the future? Very, very, <laughs> yes, very. It, it's. I mean, Amy isn't, but Leslie and I are of an age that we're concerned about the children growing up. I mean, the, as Leslie said, the floodplains, the forest fires, the, the droughts, the hurricanes, all of these things are... Well, and global uh, ocean temperatures are warming at such an accelerated uh, rate that it's, you know, 10 years ago, people talked about the Labrador Current and the Gulf Stream being pushed off. And it was like, you know, worst case scenario and, you know, all those alarmist climate people and all of that. This is getting real. And, I mean, this is threatening agriculture, uh, how we can even feed ourselves, uh, you know, to say nothing of, of staying safe, you know, with the things that we see happening yeah. um, with floods and, and trees coming down and... Um, it's, it's changed so much just in my lifetime. Yeah. Like, it's, it's at such a fast rate now. And How old are you? Uh, 39. Yes. So, um, yeah. And what we were told was going to happen to 3030, and it, you know, is, is starting to unfold now, and it's 2024. Yeah, the timeline is, is it's coming. Changing. It's and moving closer. closer. Scientists are saying that the the degree that was considered like don't cross this red line, we've crossed it, and and it's heating up faster than even the scientists expected. Yeah. And and we're at 2024. And there's, so there's so many solutions. Yeah. But the solutions have to be funded instead of things like fossil fuels, and that's like a, obviously the biggest struggle right now. So I guess. You know, a message for RBC would be to move your funds from fossil fuels into into renewables. Exactly, but only if they're real renewables, because you know a lot of these companies will say they're funding green energy, but if you look a little bit closer into it, it's not as green as they're kind of saying it is. So it'd be great to see them uh, do that for real, but we will see. And they've captured our politicians to to an unbelievably huge extent. I think this has been the big reveal of the last 10 years, maybe 15 years, is how pocketed uh, our governments are um, and, uh, and and how, you know, government and, and these huge businesses are in, in working together just to maintain the status quo. And to me, that's a form of communism. You know, like, it's, it's we're supposedly living in a democracy, but our democracy is not functioning. And, um, there are all kinds of things our governments could be doing to, to pressure the banks uh, into uh, more responsible behavior, but they don't. They choose not to do it. Yeah, that, that's something I was going to ask. Is you know what you want? It, bank a bank like RBC is one of the biggest banks in Canada. It's uh, it's you know a, a really powerful bank and and internationally and internationally. Um, so it seems like the government. Uh, the federal government is probably one of the only entities kind of capable of intervening. Uh, so, you know, do you have a message for government or, you know, do you have a message for 
Justin Trudeau, what should be done about these banks that keep sinking billions, tens of billions of dollars into fossil fuels every year? Get, get your moral compass working. Honestly. Yeah, really. I mean, the collusion, and as Leslie said, the, there's, there's way too much backroom deals that go on. Get that moral compass working again. I mean, once upon a time, Canada was known as standing on the world stage and standing up to atrocities around the world. I mean, it was Canada who basically stood up to South Africa as apartheid and pulled the Americans and the British along with them in spite of the fact they didn't want to be involved. But now our politicians, they're, they're mealy mouth. They, they sort of talk and they sort of make excuses and they sort of say, well, we're going to do this and, well, we're going to try this. They're all, they're all just basically talking a bunch of nonsense with no substance, no plan, and they're, they love the money that the banks and the big industries are affording them. They really don't care about the environment. They really don't care about genocide. They really don't care about the indigenous population in spite of the apologies that they did in 2015. They don't really care. They say they care, but it, it's a bunch of BS, basically. The actions don't, right. don't pursue the words. Yes, there, there's right. no yeah. pursuit of... When things are run like a business, when like a government is run like a business, then money is always going to be the top concern. My, my little uh, crucible of an example that I'm fixated on right now is the fact that the Irving shipping um, contract um, over the course of when it, from when it began, and I'm not sure the year that that, that frigate contract was awarded, started off at $12 billion, quickly escalated to 26, then ended up in the, in the range of 56 billion. In November of, of uh, 22, it was 82 billion, and it's now north of 84 billion. And so to see the federal government getting all jumpy over the Arrive Can app at $60 million and how the procurement there worked is a joke compared to what's gone on with the frigate, the Canadian Naval Frigate Program. And um, so we have, we have all of that happening. Um, I think the procurement there and the companies that are involved in supposedly um, supplying us with frigates that operate um, needs needs a deep dive by the Auditor General and it would be interesting to see how much of all of this is tied into that and then you you counter uh, pose that to um, saving the isthmus of Chicnecto which is an ecological and structural um, uh, uh, task that must be done in order to preserve the link between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick uh, and, and all that that encompasses. And the price tag there is 600 million. So we have 84 billion for a naval frigate uh, procurement, but we don't have 600 million. That project on the Isthmus should be finishing now. It shouldn't be just starting. And that money, I don't know, has been, if it's actually been signed, sealed, and delivered. And then in Sussex, we need six, uh, 38 million for a berm to, to prevent the continue well the, the the periodic flooding in Sussex and uh, you know and, and it's we're supposed to be groveling on our knees for something that basic and that ecological at dealing with climate change so these these guys and the politicians have a lot to uh, answer for just a last question because I know that we've got to go um, do you have hope about the fight against climate change? We did, you, you look at uh, La Pro, the, the nuclear industry. So as the tides rise, as the erosion happens, as the hurricanes come up the coast, what happens when the nuclear power plants are getting hit 
What happens to you all of You mean the aging, the aged uh, yes. a Point La Pearl that's on its second life and uh, yeah. and it's, uh, it, instead of being guaranteed for five more years, they got 10 yeah. last year? So the whole fossil fuel industry has got to have, people have to look at this very, very seriously. And RBC and all the other banks and our government officials need to take this seriously. We're, this is not this is not some little kindergarten game. This is really truly serious. Yes. And thank goodness that yeah. NB Media cares enough to come and listen to regular folks like us. That we're we're just what else do we do? That's but, the thing. There's so I do have hope because there's there's so many people fighting so hard and doing much, like so much good work. But I think we're going to go through a lot of struggle before we get there, if we get there. We'll be joining others up at a different branch of RBC where a letter will be, be, be presented and uh, you're welcome to join us there. But there are others who are going to be out, out there on the street in the snowy, rainy weather. And I, I think that, um, you know, we're all united. Um, uh, all of us who are, who are concerned customers citizens and activists by um, the, by the teachings of the of, of indigenous knowledge and seven generations yes. and you know we're not looking at seven generations now David I wouldn't have said that ten years ago but there's not seven generations now we're not going to be here at this time. thank you um, I guess we better get going